Hi guys, welcome back to Bible Time with Mrs. Barr. This week we are in chapter 16, Samuel listens to God. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We just pray that you would help us to, to be like Samuel, to listen to God and to obey his calling and, and follow what he would have us to do. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Your memory verse for this week is 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all these, all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. That's 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. Today we are in lesson 2, 16.2, Samuel's service. We're going to read 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 21. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those, actually, hold on, we're going to just listen to it. It's easier. First Samuel 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, Say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. Okay. Have you ever thought about what would happen if Samuel had not been sensitive to God's call. And if he had not been willing to listen to God and follow through with obedience. You know, think about it. Because of Samuel's dedication to the Lord, God called him to be a leader 
a prophet, a priest, and a judge. As a prophet, Samuel delivered God's message to the people. As a priest, he presented God's people by offering sacrifices for their sins. As a judge, Samuel traveled a circuit to carry out justice according to the law of God. Once Israel determined to have an earthly king, God directed Samuel to anoint Saul and then David. Anoint means to apply an oil as a sign of God's choice. To David, God made a promise about the Messiah. Messiah refers to the expected king and deliverer of the Hebrews. Although God is omniscient or all-knowing, he is sovereign or all-powerful. Sorry, although God is omniscient or all-knowing and sovereign or all-powerful, he allows people to choose to affect events as well as others around them. We can make choices that affect different things, but ultimately God is in control of it all. Now we're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. From year to year, he went on a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, judging Israel in all those places. But he always went back to Ramah, where his home was, and there he also held court for Israel. And he built an altar, an altar there to the Lord. Um, God's call to Samuel as Israel's final judge meant he judged all of Israel. This was not an easy job for Samuel because of Israel's, because the Israelites were a selfish and rebellious people. The people of Samuel's day were also like the people of today. The Israelites needed a, to hear God's word in order to know the difference between right and wrong. They needed to listen to God. Us, just like the Israelites, need to hear God's word so we can be able to discern between good and evil and make wise choices. Discern means to come to know, recognize, or understand. We also need to learn to listen to God so that we can obey his word. God provides direction in our lives too, one step at a time, and guides us to make the right choices, which is consistent with his truth and are, ple are pleasing to him. Another man in a more recent history is Char Charlotte Jones, who was sensitive to God's call. He listened to God's voice and was obedient. As a result, he set up a Christian radio station to reach those who did not know Jesus as their savior. Um, okay, so I'm going to look him up real quick. And we'll read a little bit about him. Clarence Jones. Oh, 
Okay. He was an advisor and um, speechwriter for the Martin Luther King. He was a scholar in the residence of Martin Luther King Jr. And just, he did amazing things. He listened to God. He did what God wanted him to do. And, um, obey, obeyed his voice. He was a leader in the Southern Baptist Church and just did amazing things. So it's very important that we listen to God's voice and we follow his example and we do what he wants us to do. So this is lesson 16.2, Samuel's service. We'll see you next time. Bye. God bless.